Cultural diversity and cultural heritage form essential foundations for human-centered socioeconomic development. And yet, every year, precious cultural properties are lost to disasters around the world. On the 11th of March, 2011, Japan was struck by the Great East Japan earthquake and the tsunami that followed. More than 15,000 people lost their lives. Even today, 2,600 people remain missing. Four years after the earthquake, many residents remain in temporary housing, some in the same distant locales to which they were originally evacuated. This disaster also caused damage to Japan's cultural heritage. In 19 prefectures, there were 744 cases of damage to cultural heritage safeguarded under the Cultural Properties Protection Law. But of course, these statistics account for only a fraction of the actual damage to Japan's cultural properties. In the seaport community of Kasen Numa in northern Miyagi Prefecture, the tsunami washed over areas of the city facing the bay. Of Kasen Numa's seven registered heritage buildings, one was swept away completely, while six sustained serious damage. Though these historic buildings were originally given up for lost by their owners, they received support from the local community and from Japanese and overseas private funders. Today, they safely await full-scale restoration. The earthquake's shaking and liquefaction also damaged a nationally important preservation district located in the city of Katori, in Chiba Prefecture. Despite the damage, members of the local community elected to hold their annual festival according to schedule in 2011, in hopes that it would aid in the recovery effort. This coordinated community approach to recovery in turn engendered great support from within Japan and from abroad. What was the motivating force behind these successful recovery efforts? The impact of the Great East Japan earthquake is not limited to tangible cultural properties such as buildings, historic sites, and famous locales. Intangible cultural heritage, such as festivals and annual events, also suffered damage from this disaster. For example, the props, costumes, and masks used for traditional dance forms, as well as many of the individuals who embodied living cultural traditions, were lost in the tsunami. In some regions, whole communities were displaced and scattered. However, many survivors of this natural disaster found the impetus to recover through the shared culture that had been preserved within their local communities. With help from private and corporate funders, neighboring communities, and civic groups with related cultural traditions, the impacted communities have repaired or remade their festival costumes and props, and people are once again praying, performing, and dancing. In Japan, intangible heritage supported the resurrection of spirit, and tangible heritage supported the inheritance of memory. They both provided the vital energy needed for the rebuilding of lives and the recovery of communities. In the chaos after the Great East Japan earthquake, government, academia, industry, and community-based organizations worked together to try and contain the loss and damage to heritage. For movable heritage, more than 6,800 experts contributed to the rescue, emergency treatment, and temporary storage of heritage objects at 90 locations in the four most heavily affected prefectures. In the realm of immovable heritage, architects surveyed the damage to over 4,000 buildings. One important challenge going forward is how to maintain and expand this network into the future. Regions all over the world face disasters. And when disaster strikes, it is culture that has the power to inspire people in affected areas to restore relationships and to regain the energy needed to rebuild their lives. This is why it is so essential that we turn our attention to the cultural heritage at the foundation of our daily lives. 
As we continue preserving this heritage, we must also ensure its inclusion in regional and national disaster plans. Regular efforts to build capacity, to promote research, to develop networks, and to establish partnerships are also essential. And we need to enrich international collaboration through existing systems, such as the International Committee of the Blue Shield. Cultural heritage is a cornerstone of disaster-resilient communities. It is up to us to ensure that cultural heritage, along with the communities that harbor it, is safely preserved from disasters so that it may be handed down to future generations.